The washer's broke. I'm a Maytag washer. My parts never break. I'm a Maytag washer. My parts never break. <laughs> oh, snap. About a month ago, Tammy and I did a video. We kind of jinxed ourselves. You know, we did a video on a off-grid type washing machine that we put together. We used a couple of buckets. We got a hose, some water, and some soap. And, you know, so I'm gonna go ahead and show this to you real quick. This is what we used at the time when our washing machine broke down about like six, eight years ago. There was a period of about two, three months we didn't have the funds or the money to go buy another washing machine. And at the time, I, you know, I was not really an appliance kind of repairman, so to speak. Uh, so we just saved up our pennies. We put $20 a week into a jar. And uh, when we was able to actually find a washing machine to match the money that we had in the jar, uh, that's when we went to work and we went and got one, okay? Um, but this particular washing machine, um, you know, it's a direct drive Kenmore. And I watched a few videos on, you know, repairing these types of washing machines. And what I found is that it probably wasn't going to be too difficult for me to do it. So I went ahead and disassembled it and went through some of the motions and Nothing that I was finding matched up with the information that I was getting online. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what I did and what I found when I pulled it apart and what I actually did the first go around. And then after that, I'm going to tell you the rest of the story. I'm going to go over three things you got like your spin cycle you got your agitating and you got your water pumping okay and so uh, really there's only three components that will take care of that one is the clutch that handles the spin cycle along with another piece I'll show you uh, you got your water pump that you know does the pumping of the water and then you've got your gearbox and your motor uh, that operates, you know, the washing machine as a whole, as far as agitating and so forth. Um, so what you've got to do is you've got to deduce, I mean, what part of this system right here, I yanked this out. I'm going to show you how I put it back in. It's not really difficult. Take me about, oh, I'd say about 20 minutes to actually put the whole thing back together. But if your water's not pumping, this is your water pump. Now this is a Kenmore heavy duty series, 70 series, uh, large capacity machine, okay? Uh, that's a water pump. You can get those about $35 or so or less, all right? That's the motor, which you don't wanna have to replace. And that's the gearbox, all right? Now, this gearbox, I found runs about $375. The motor, you don't even want to have to mess with that one. If there's something wrong with the motor, you know, maybe uh, put a meter on a capacitor or something like that if you want to get that technical and replace the capacitor, okay? Um, but the issue I was having with this is that it was not spinning. And the spinning is controlled by this clutch and by what they call a clutch or a watchdog. That's what that is, a watchdog. Uh, I'll show you that close up here in just a second. So technically, what I found, you know, it did a clicking, it made a clicking sound. It would agitate and then it would pump the water out, but it just wouldn't and when it would go to the spin cycle, it would start clicking. And what I found when I pulled the motor off, and I was looking, you know, I, I turned the motor, I turned uh, the water pump and the gear case and everything. I couldn't get a clicking sound. So I get back down in here and I'm going, okay, what's going on? And then I find this. 
Okay, and this piece right here on the edge of that is broken. But you just can't buy this piece right here, okay? You've got the, uh, yeah, it looks like that. All right, you got this, and that piece right there, that's where it's broken. If you can see that. So what I had, and you just can't buy this one separately, guess what they make you do? They make you buy the whole kit, okay? So I'm just gonna take this, and I'm gonna slip it right there. Where the other one was, it's got a groove, it's got, you know, uh, corners on opposite each other and then the rounded area and it just fits right over that. Uh, let me make sure I get it on there right, make sure. Yeah, there we go. It just fits right over top of that. Anyway, that's the way it was sitting when I pulled the motor out. And so I'm gonna set that back right up in there. Okay. Now what I've got to do is I've got to replace this clutch right here. One thing I noticed and I did, and when I did the research on this is that it has this gooey crap, you know, all over the, the clutch and it's real sticky. Um, and that's a combination, that, that's basically a combination of, uh, you know, the, um, the heat and the speed and these clutch pads wearing down. If you'll look here, the clutch pads on this are about twice or, you know, much larger than the clutch pads on the, uh, you know, the, the original clutch that's there. So that's all melted and solidified and got sticky and stuff. It's, I'm just gonna pull this uh, retainer clip off. And, you know, trust me guys, I'm not, you know, a professional appliance repair guy by any means, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and see what I can do about getting this fixed. Now this washing machine, trust me, this thing suffered a major case of spinsiety. All right, so anyway, there's the uh, clutch. I pulled the retainer clip off. Oh, and you've seen where I had pulled this uh, snap ring clip also. And so really all I need to do is slip this onto it. It's got grooves for those ears to sit down in. And so, Hold on there, let me see, I'm gonna make sure I'm getting everything, nope, okay. I've got one more piece here. Oh, they actually gave me new ones, how about that? That was nice of them, wasn't it? Okay, so I gotta put this off here and then I need to put this uh, new plastic, uh, or, I don't know what they call that thing, but it fits right down in those grooves I'll slip that right over there again. Ah, there we go. Nice fit. Then I'm gonna take this new snap ring and there's a hole right here that the edge of this snap ring has got to fall into to catch, all right? So I'm gonna set that. You can see where I set it in there. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna work my way around and try to get some kind of leverage on there. Did that work? Nope. Okay. Let's see here. I've got, I've got to get that in there. Ah, there you go. Gotta make sure you get that pushed down there good. I think what's gonna happen is this is gonna slip down in there like I was suggesting earlier. Trying to make sure that uh, you 
to get that locked into place. There we go. It's going to have a nice Yeah, so you just, there's some grooves on these ears right here that it needs to go into. And so once you get it up underneath of there, you can basically just take your screwdriver like I did right here. First time I ever done it. So I just want you to know that if you uh, put that in there and you get that first part locked in there then you can go over here lock that one in lock that one in lock that one in boom you're done okay so now I need to put uh, this clip they probably oh why they gave me a new one of them why didn't they give me a new one of those anyway I'm gonna put this uh, snap clip seat clip back on the shaft and now the clutch is installed. So you can see how easy that was. Now the next thing is, uh, before I forget, I'm going to take this. This is kind of like a, uh, uh, I, I don't even know what they call that. I, if it was on my Yamaha outboard motor, I called that a spanner, or I called that just a hub, hub, Oh, that's what that is. That's a hub cut. That's a cover for the hub. All right. Well, anyway, so that's where that is. And so now at this time, I'm ready to put this back together. All right. So what I did instead of taking the whole washing machine apart is I basically just pulled the motor out. You got to take the, uh, you know, the nuts and screws and crap out of out of the uh, what do they call that the agitator inside but and I'll show you how to put to get put that together here for too long but what I'm gonna do is now I got this piece I got put up on here right now there's a C clip that goes there too that's uh, a good thing I laid it right down there so that I could see it and remember I had to get that put in. Alright, so I'm gonna get that C clip put on eventually. Okay. So I got it set on the groove and I'm just gonna push down with the screwdriver and voila okay now that i got that part of it done next thing to do is to go ahead and slip the shaft back in the bottom of the uh, drum and slide it on up in there i got these three posts i gotta line them up with the three bolt holes i've got me uh-oh that's what happens when uh, you're colorblind. You tend to lose a few things here and there, but I got these three bolts, and each of these bolts uh, just got to line those posts up there and get them in that hole. I got this one hose right here that. Maybe I should go ahead and try to slip that on. Maybe. Okay, there we go. Just keep jiggling and wiggling. And then these uh, half inch bolts go in these three holes. And that whole assembly bolts right up to the bottom of the uh, drum, okay? Uh, there was one other thing I wanted to show you, I guess, while I had this up. 
which is what everybody else was telling me was wrong with this. Uh, it was that this piece right here, which I'm gonna save this one because there's absolutely nothing wrong with that and you're always gonna need a spare part down the road. Okay, so I take that one off, put this one on, and then six months later this breaks and I gotta buy another one. But this one here works just fine, it looks just fine. There's two plastic pieces. Here, I'll show you. I gotta get this put in my spare parts drawer. Okay, but uh, this is what they were telling me was wrong with this. This thing kind of pieces together like that and they call, that's what they call a coupler for the motor. Okay, and you can unbolt the motor from the gear or from the, you know, the transmission, slip that in there and replace it. But being how that one's not broken, I'm gonna hold on to this one for a rainy day. And now I'm gonna go ahead and finish bolting up this motor. Now there's one other thing I gotta do. I gotta get this plugged back in. I'll do that in just a second. Let me finish getting this bolted up. And these were not that difficult to uh, break loose to get off. It was just a matter of just as easy as what I'm doing right now. You know, so you don't, don't over tighten them. Okay, so the only thing left right now is to plug it back in. I really could have done that before I sat the motor up in there. But there's a plug right there, it's all notched and the, you know, everything fits. You know, like once you get it lined up and you push it in and, you know, the tab clicks and, you know, of course, it's tight, right? Okay. You know, when you, when you pull this apart, you want to make sure that you remember where each of these lines go on the capacitor. I'm not sure if it really matters, but on this particular one, you know, the short was on the inside and the long was on the outside. So there we go. That's one. And two. And they're just slide on plugs. If you can't figure it out, you ought not to be working on a washing machine. Okay, so now what I need to do is make sure these hoses are connected for the water pump. These clamps for the hoses, I just latched onto them with a uh, pair of channel locks slide that down into place got one more okay so let's get that thing thing clamp uh, let's get it compressed Wiggle it down into place. Make sure the hose is all the way on and you're good to go. So the entire bottom of this in practically real time, guys, is done. So it was that easy. All right, so, so far, you know, we've died. I've helped you try to diagnose it to the best of your ability. Now, from what I understand, this um, type of repair and everything that I showed you here is kind of like pretty much standard on all direct drive washing machines. Now if you got a washing machine with a belt, drop me. But as far as I'm concerned, this washing machine here is pretty much easy enough to repair. So once I got the uh, you know, the bottom side of this washing machine all put back together. You know, I thought I was on the road to recovery, right? Um, so I've got these 
parts that I tried to put back in here, you know, like the agitator, you know, this thing right here. And so, I, you know, I slipped that back down in there. So anyway, I, I, you know, I started to assemble the washing machine back together. And, um, well, I guess maybe I should show you that real quick. But, you know, these parts here, they pretty much, you know, once you get like this plastic piece right here goes in there. And you see those knobs there's a slot down here along the edge of that spline that it fits into and this uh clippy right thing here whatever that is that collar uh it fits right over top of the shaft okay and it catches one of the uh ears on that plastic piece now once you get that in there uh yeah here let's do this okay yeah i actually got the parts and pieces i can show you but you slip that back on and pretty much sit down in there you get it in the gear this piece right here this is a collar to help support um i guess the agitator cap or you know whatever this thing here is called no it's not that it's this was whatever this is called all right but so i start assembling the agitator again don't mind all that dirt this thing's been sitting outside and uh once i get this all put back together and we get it cleaned up we'll be able to uh get that taken care of but what i found after i had watched all those videos and i got all the information i needed that i just shared with you to put this back together uh, this was sitting down in here, but it just kind of spun. It did. But this thing here was just wobbling, and I was trying to figure out, you know, it has these teeth. What is, what is it supposed to catch on? You'll notice it's got these little gear or notches all the way around the outside of the drum. Well, I started seeing stuff like that. That's all broken, ground up plastic. All right. So none of the videos that I saw, you know, regarding the spinning or agitating or whatever, maybe I didn't write, watch the right ones, but I watched this one video and this guy who had the nine things that could go wrong and why your washing machine isn't performing right. And nowhere in that video did he discuss this catch-all on this agitator in that video. And so what I found is all those broken plastic pieces are actually like little uh, let me just rip this open come on I don't need the box let's just go I should have brought me a knife out here huh but we're gonna do it just like that all right so what I did is I went online and specifically keyed in agitator repair kit. Well, after I did that, um, I got the videos that discussed like this little kit. And this little kit this is my first time opening it, right? It comes with these little plastic, I don't even know what you call them. I mean, they're calling this whole thing a bearing. But it's a thrust washer kit is what it is. 
okay and so I got some new pieces here and what I need to do is I need to go ahead and um, assemble this kit and then I'm gonna then I'll get ready to put it back together okay well it looks as though that don't look the same as that does it huh maybe this ain't gonna work maybe this will work I don't know but what I'm gonna do looks like that'll fit in this one I'll fit there maybe I won't need this but this was actually supposed to be for this washing washing machine I'm kind of uh, somewhat concerned but I'm going to slip these in here they only go in there one way okay if you'll look here you know there's only one way that can go in you know now let's just use this other one so you can't put it in there way it doesn't have any way to go so now that I've got those pieces on there I need to figure out how this is going to work you know this 25587 hmm I think they sent me the wrong kit okay so now that I got this all together I don't know if you can see it but if you spin it this way or it spins freely if you try to turn it back and I'm guessing that that's how it kind of locks in to do the agitating I got this bolt that I dropped down in here and I just need to kind of Flip it so that it falls bolt side down first. And I got a 716th ratchet with a half or half inch drive with a ratchet and a 716th socket. And then what I need to do is I just need to go ahead and turn that ever so slightly to try to get it to start. I don't know if I got it started or not. It feels like it's getting snug. Okay. We're getting there, guys. All right, so I'm not going to crank on it. That's plastic, right? All right. There we go. Nice and snug, though. Okay, so I've got that. And this right here is the cap to seal that okay it's got a rubber washer on here i'm just going to save this one for a rainy day so now that that is secure now this piece right here is fun because it it, it goes on and locks based on this ring right here so i need to just kind of slip that over the top of that and then take that ring and push it down all the way around until it snaps. And now my nasty looking washing machine is all put back together. Okay. Okay guys, this is the moment of truth here. Okay, filled up with water. It's agitating and look at that agitator spin around. Ha <laughs> ha. And if you need to know how to uh, buy, 
uh, bypass the safety switch. You just stick a screwdriver right there and let it hold it down. And she's a rolling. All right, guys. Well, it's draining water on the floor because I didn't get the hose in the drain hose properly. But she is a spinning. Look at her go. Yeehaw. All right. Wow, that's nice. Okay, well there you have it folks. The end to another saga in the deep woods of North Florida. See you later.